morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Thank you so much to the ANA for, uh, for inviting me to be here. Um, my name is Rosie Rios. I'm the 43rd Treasurer of the United States. Just to give you a little bit of background about uh, what it is that I do. So I'm the first Treasurer of the United States in many, many years to have direct oversight over the Bureau of Engraving and Printing and the U.S. Mint. So a little uh, less than 4,000 employees. It's a fabulous responsibility and something that I asked for when I took this position. So as you know, we are mandated by Congress to ensure a robust circulation of the dollar coins. That is something that, that Congress has, uh, has enacted uh, starting from 2005. And so we obviously have to follow what it is that Congress wants us to do. And as far as we're concerned, the dollar coin is still uh, in circulation, is still active, and we're still supporting it. There probably is not a day that goes by where someone isn't thinking about the coin versus the, the, the dollar note. Again, that is, an absolutely, um, that is absolutely up to Congress how they want to do that. Uh, we know from the Federal Reserve's perspective, the Federal Reserve is the issuing authority for our currency, and we know that the lifespan of the dollar bill has increased. It used to be 18 months, it's now about 42 months. And so, um, and so it is absolutely up to the Federal Reserve. They can determine, they could actually extend the lifespan of the dollar bill just by adjusting their, uh, their machinery. So um, uh, until then, and obviously that makes an impact on the GAO report that was issued earlier this year, um, but until then, again, um, that is up to Congress how they want to move forward. But, you know, I, I'm all about choice. I think if the American public wants to use the dollar coin and the dollar note, they should have those options. So uh, currently, as far as I know, we do not have anyone in the pipeline for new Mint Director. Uh, uh, Richard Peterson is currently the Deputy Director at the Mint and serving as our leadership. He reports directly to me, as does Larry Felix, the Director of the Bureau of Engraving and Printing. Um, as you may know, currently the Mint Director is a presidential appointee, as am I. Uh, there was pending legislation at some point about whether or not the Mint Director was going to stay as a presidential appointment. Uh, as it stands now, it currently is, and nothing else has changed. So, uh, as you probably have heard, we unveiled the new $100 bill last April. Uh, uh, shortly thereafter, uh, the Bureau of Engraving and Printing encountered some issues of creasing. The exact source has not been determined, although we have been working very closely with a paper manufacturer, uh, among other stakeholders, including the Federal Reserve, of course, and the BEP. Uh, we have been undergoing an enormous amount of testing as we speak. It is absolutely up to the Federal Reserve when they will decide to actually issue the $100 bill. Uh, we certainly don't foresee it uh, in this calendar year. Uh, we are working very, very hard to resume production of the new $100 bill. We think we will get there very shortly to resume production, uh, hopefully as early as this fall. And then once we reach a certain quota that is up to the Federal Reserve in terms of the number of bills that they would like to, the number of notes that they would like to release at one time, that would be their determination. I, I actually used to be a very avid collector as a child. The, the wheat back pennies, I used to love those. Um, I do promote it for my kids, and before I took this position, I thought the America the Beautiful Quarter Series um, was, was something, and, and the 50 State Quarter Series was something that I thought was very kind of fun to, to go around and try to find with my kids in circulation. Uh, so I am encouraging them to continue that. I think we should all be encouraging our kids uh, to look at uh, our currency and coins on a daily, daily basis. And, and someone had asked me that question earlier, and I'm going to just repeat it, which is, you know, someone, I was actually on a, a, a finance panel recently, had nothing to do with currency and coins, and, and one of the personal finance panelists was asked the question about um, how they uh, how they work with their own, how do they teach their kids about, about managing money? And this person had said, well, she definitely relies on debit cards for her kids. And, and, and it wasn't a question to me. It had nothing to do with, again, this, this panel had nothing even to do with currency and coin. But I felt like I had to answer that question. And so I volunteered uh, that I refuse to put my kids on debit cards. I absolutely refuse it. 
And you know, when I, there's something about connecting with your money on a, on a day-to-day -day basis that not only allows you to track your money, your real money, in terms of, of, of managing what you have in your pocket and what's left, you don't get that feeling with the debit card. You get your $20 on your debit card, you know, at some point you're going to run out. Do you really track exactly what's on it with every expenditure? I, I'm not convinced that, that kids are in that mind frame that they're going to do that. You reach your limit and you reach your limit. For me, if I give my son a $20 bill on a Friday night to go see a movie, you know, he pays $8.50 for his ticket. He's going to have $11.50 left over and he's going to have to figure out exactly and track exactly how much is left at that moment in time. Whatever is left, he can save it. Whatever, you know, he runs out, then he runs out. And, and that's it. And, and I, I, as I mentioned before, I, say, I feel the same way about social networking. I think there's something that's lost when we don't feel and touch and connect every day with what's real. And to me, cash and currency are real. So just so you know, uh, Fort Knox, so, so I also oversee our, our, uh, uh, our, our gold. So uh, we are the official custodian of all U.S. gold, including Fort Knox, including the 5% that is in the, uh, the, uh, the New York Federal, Federal Reserve. We also have some gold reserves also in Denver. Um, it is real. We audit it every year. Every year it's audited. I've seen our gold. It is absolutely there, and it is real. But I do appreciate that question, though.